Welcome to our video on verifying trigonometric identities. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are the guidelines for verifying identities. Number one, you should memorize the fundamental identities. This will help you to identify how to approach the verifications. Number two, rewrite the more complicated side into a simpler form. Number three, it may be helpful to convert everything in terms of sine and cosine. Number four, any factoring or algebraic operation should be performed. For example, adding, subtracting, multiplying. And number five, if an expression contains a sum or difference, multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. Now again, these are just guidelines, so the best way to get good at verifying identities is to practice. And think of it as in terms of a puzzle that you're trying to solve, and hopefully you'll have some fun along the way. So here are a couple of identities we want to verify. This first one, if you take a look at both sides, there's really only one side we can work with. There's a product here that we can work with. We can't really do much with sine theta. And the next thing is we can rewrite tangent theta as sine theta divided by cosine theta. And it's probably helpful if we write cosine theta over 1, and then it becomes very obvious how this can be simplified. We have a common factor of cosine theta, and now we've verified our identity. Sine theta equals sine theta. Now it is important when we verify identities that we do show thorough work so that if someone was to look at our work they could tell exactly how we verify the identity. Okay, on the second identity, we may think to multiply this by the conjugate by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine theta. However, a lot of times when you have a trig function squared, we want to use one of those Pythagorean identities. And we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So if we solve that identity for cosine squared theta, we could replace this with 1 minus sine squared theta. And already the left side is looking more like the right side. And now our numerator is actually a difference of squares, and this can be factored. And the two factors would be 1 plus sine theta and 1 minus sine theta. And again, we can see this fraction simplifies. We have a common factor of 1 plus sine theta. And we have now verified our identity. We'll write it one more time. 1 minus sine theta equals 1 minus sine theta. Let's go and take a look at a couple more. Now again, we're going to work with the more complicated side. But the question really becomes, what can we do to the left side to make it look like the right side? Often there are several ways to verify an identity. What comes to mind for me here is multiplying this fraction by the conjugate. Let's go ahead and do that first. And from here, we'll rewrite the rest. So when we find this product, we'll leave the numerator in factored form. So we'll have sine theta times 1 minus cosine theta. And then when we multiply the denominator out, and then when we FOIL this, we're going to have 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then again, it's important to continue to rewrite this every time. Now we have 1 minus cosine squared theta in the denominator. And we can replace this with sine squared theta. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, this fraction simplifies nicely. There's a common factor of sine in the numerator and denominator. And notice now we have a common denominator of sine theta, so we can now combine or add these two fractions together. So notice we have 1 plus 1, that would give us 2. And then we have a negative cosine theta plus cosine theta, that would equal 0. So we have a 2 in the numerator, sine theta in the denominator. And in fact, 2 and 2 over sine theta is equal to 2 cosecant theta and we have our verification. Remember that 1 over sine theta is equal to cosecant theta. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more. Now we may question which side to work with here. Seeing a sine squared theta here would lead us to perform a substitution using the Pythagorean identity. So we can replace this with 1 minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta equals secant theta minus cosine theta. 
Now in this fraction, because we're dividing by one term, we can break this up into two different fractions. So this is the same as 1 over cosine theta minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta. Now things are looking good here. I know 1 over cosine theta is equal to secant theta. This fraction simplifies with a common factor of cosine theta. This simplifies to 1. We have one factor of cosine theta here. And that looks like all that we need. We have verification. Let's go ahead and try one more. And again, we may think here to do a substitution with sine squared theta. But the other option would be to try to factor the left side. And because factoring this will lead to sine squareds and cosine squareds, I think this may be the way to go. Let's try it. So that's a difference of squares. We have sine squared theta in the first position and then cosine squared to the second position. Remember we have a difference of squares, one's plus and one's minus. Next, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. So on the left side, we now have just sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta equals two sine squared theta minus one. Notice the right side is in terms of sine squared and constants. Well, here we have a sine squared. We can do another Pythagorean substitution using cosine squared theta. Remember that cosine squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. Since we're subtracting cosine squared theta, we need to subtract the quantity one minus sine squared theta. Let's go ahead and clear these parentheses now. We have sine squared theta minus a negative sine squared theta. That's two sine squared theta minus one, and we have verification. Okay, so when you're working on these problems, if you struggle, it's only natural. If you try something that it doesn't work, then you just want to try something else. So if you think of this as a trigonometric puzzle that you have to solve, hopefully you'll enjoy the process, and with time you'll get better at it. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.